Hello, I'm Michael Blevins, the redhead known as Renex. I'm a senior principal engineer in the technology leadership career path at Optum. I'm gonna start out this episode with a little news, followed up with a quick definition of Terraform, and then show you how to create a key vault and a secret using Terraform. If that agenda interests you, stick around. Catch the Easter egg? If you're new to my channel, you would have caught the one word addition to my intro. I'm a principal engineer in the technology leadership career path at Optum. I'm a principal engineer in the technology leadership career path at Optum. I'm a principal engineer in the technology leadership career path at Optum. I'm a principal engineer in the technology leadership career path at Optum. My regulars might have missed this as well. I'm a principal engineer in the technology leadership career path at Optum. I accepted a promotion within Optum Payment Integrity. After six years away, I'm happy to be headed back to where it all started for me at Optum. My last feature for the public cloud team was one that I thought would be good to expand on my We All Have Secrets episode, which you can find up over here. I shared four ways to securely store your secrets using Azure Key Vault. Now I'm going to share a little secret. There's a fifth way. <laughs> Terraform is a tool from HashiCorp that allows us to define infrastructure as code. When we apply a plan to our cloud infrastructure, Terraform keeps track of that state in a TF state file. When we make changes to our code that defines the infrastructure and apply again, the new changes are applied incrementally based on the differences between the code definition, state file, and the actual cloud infrastructure. Before I start the demo, I want to apologize to my subscribers for my absence over the last several months. With the world in the midst of a pandemic and the time I had to invest my new role, I slipped a little bit on my channel. With this video, I'm wrapping up my first year of reducing friction with RunX and renewing my dedication. Now, onto the part that you joined to see, the demo. For this particular demo, I'm going to create a key vault and save the secret in VS Code with some Terraform. Before I do that, let's go over some of the, the different pieces that are involved here. I've got a hello world empty TF vars file, and that file is what I would end up kicking off the Terraform with for populating some of the variables. I did not populate these in this particular file. And I'm using my hello world TF vars file itself that actually has those things populated. But to see what you're doing, you're basically saying, here's the variable and here is your value. The other piece that I have here is a main TF. So I can come in here and say main TF, what do we have in this file? So we've got some resources. I've got a random string generator piece, and that's really around four namespaces. I've got a Azure RM resource group, and that is hw-rg. And I'm going to get the name from a variable hw-rg. So if I look at my variables, I've got hw-rg, and it's a type of string. And it's going to get that value for resource group. If I go back into this, you'll see that I'm creating this resource group based off of that name, and I want to put it in the East US location. Additionally, I've got a Azure RM key vault in which I've got the hw-kv as the name, and it's using that variable. And it's going to be rfwr, reducing friction with runx dash kv for a key vault. And that also is a string. You can see all the variables I have here are actually strings. And then you can see the location. I'm going to pull that location based off the resource group, hwrg location. So it's going to pull the East US location here and populate it here. I've got then my resource group name, and we're going to pull the name from here. And I've got my tenant ID, which is coming from my Azure RM client config current tenant ID. 
I'm using the premium SKU. I've set some access policies for some particular key and secret permissions. So create list git, list set git delete. And then I additionally have the access policy for an object here. And it's a create list git, again, list set git delete. And the tags, the environment is production. And here I've also got my secret that I want to set. And you know the secret here is saying the name is strongest Avenger. The value is Wanda. All right. And the key vault ID is going to be based off of our Azure RM key vault HWKV and the ID. And our tags again are going to be production. A couple other files of interest here is the providers TF file. And in that particular thing, it's our Azure RM that we're setting and also a Azure AD that we're setting. So the, those particular pieces and we have a purge soft delete on destroy is set to true. Then I also have the outputs Terraform file. That particular file is really just going to give us the output uh, so that we can use the Azure RM resource group name right and what that value would be uh, as well as the azure rm key vault name and then i've got additionally my git ignore file which tells me what to ignore and things like that but before you are able to execute the terraform for a particular project you want to make sure that you have that init so and here i'm going to do a terraform init and we'll watch that and it actually comes back pretty quickly and says uh, Terraform has been successfully initialized. That's great. So we're, we're good to go. So I'm going to show you a couple other Terraform commands here. One of them is going to be the plan and basically describe it. So the plan, I'm going to tell it what var file am I looking at? And rather than look at the empty var file that I shared, I'm going to look at the populated one, which is hello world tf vars. So I go ahead and hit that command and it executes. It's going to basically calculate what it would be if you were to execute this command, what are the things that are actually going to happen? And you can see here the plan saying, hey, there are four things that we're going to add and there's zero to change, zero to destroy. We scroll up a little bit, we can see what the actions are going to be. You can see your uh, application ID and some, some various other things as well that are the result of the plan. Now, what we can do is actually come back through here and do an apply now, providing that same file is going to do the same thing as the plan, except it's actually going to execute this against the Azure portal. So in here, I'm actually gonna type in yes, because I do want this to go ahead and perform the action. Actually, I'm gonna type no. I'm gonna type no, because I wanna show you another command that uh, might make things easier. If this is the first time you're doing it and you, you know you want this to execute, you don't have to run the apply and then be prompted if this is what you want to do. So I'll say no, the apply is actually being canceled. Another command that can be used is the Terraform apply, but we're going to add the dash auto dash approve on the end of it. We're we'll going to execute that. And you'll see the difference here because what it's going to do is go out there, run against Azure, make sure that those resources are applied, but it's not going to prompt you. It's just going to go ahead and create those resources. And as we watch this, it may take a little bit of time because it has to spin up those resources in Azure. And one of the things I want to talk about why that's happening is the, the Terraform TF state file. That file is basically what Terraform uses to calculate the plan or uh, what it's going to apply because it will go against Azure and look at your Terraform TF state file and it will basically say, all right, here are the things that you're executing, what resources you want to do, and it'll calculate out what has to be done. So if we had already ran this and we wanted to add another secret, we could add the other secret in the TF file. It would go ahead and execute. It's not going to try to create the uh, key vault because it already exists. It's not going to create the 
other secret because it would already exist, but the new secret that we had to add, it would go ahead and create that one. And the way it does that is by comparing and contrasting what is actually there versus what the TF state file says is there. And additionally, what you have um, actually coded to happen. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hop over to my resource groups and I've already got that filtered down to RFWR. I'll do a refresh and now you can see it's already got that out there so I can pop into that resource group and I can see that I've got my reducing friction with Run X key vault already set up. I can dig into that. We can go in and see our particular secrets, which there are no secrets there currently. If I hop back now and I look at this, it's still creating. So we'll give this a little bit of time. And now you can see that it's creating the secret and the apply has completed. Four things were added. We'll hop back over here. We'll refresh again. Our strongest Avenger is in there. Uh, the status is enabled. We can actually go into that and see what the current version is based off of GUID. And you can see there's a secret value. We want to go ahead and show that secret value and Wanda is in there. So that wraps up the demo portion here. I've actually shown you how to create the Azure Key Vault and a secret using Terraform and described a little bit about Terraform for you. I hope you're able to use that in the future. And uh, give me a second, I'll wrap up. Now you have five different options to add an Azure Key Vault to your project for storing your secrets securely. Of the five different ways, Terraform has been both a blessing and a curse for projects I've worked on recently. The Terraform state is what makes this option really interesting, but when the state gets out of sync, it can cause different issues. Let me know in the comments if you've had any good or bad experiences with Terraform in your projects. Azure Key Vault is a great way of keeping secrets. You just need to select the right option that works best for you and your team. In closing, I want to thank you for watching this episode of Reducing Friction with RunX. You can reach out to me in multiple ways, at RunX on Twitter, LinkedIn, or GitHub, at the redhead known as RunX on Facebook, or by visiting my contact page on my website, runx.com. In a future episode, I plan to show how to use Azure DevOps Pipeline to do this in an automated fashion. Let me know your thoughts or share the friction that you're currently facing in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Michael Blevins. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. Next time I upload a video, you'll be notified. Or stick around, watch these videos over here. Peace.